The skin is meant to protect us. Not all products are going to absorb the same way. Castor oil actually has a unique gift of being able to penetrate the skin more than other oils. And that's why we're able to use it for so many natural remedies. I'm going to share some commonly asked questions about castor oil and go over some mistakes you may be making. Never use your castor oil if you are wearing your contacts. In case I haven't been clear enough about applying it at night, using it with any type of contacts is a no-no. That any type of oil that you put on your skin, it, when it heats up with your skin, it spreads. So there's a really good chance it's going to get into your eyes. We don't want that oil to get into our eyes underneath our contacts where we can harbor bacteria and even infections. So we want to make sure that our eyes are really clean. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one. And I describe exactly how I use castor oil around my eye area for my brows, for my lashes and for my chronic dry eyes. Now, moving on, what is the difference between black castor oil and the regular castor oil? I know there's a lot of debate around which one works better. And I'm here to tell you that it's about the process. That's actually the difference. The black castor oil has ash in it. Some people really like that for the scalp. Other people swear by it for different reasons. You do you. For me, I personally am sticking with the regular. And if you need recommendations on brands that are not sponsored, you can go to my video in part one where I give you a few, including a budget-friendly option. Every single time I've ever posted a video on castor oil, by the way, and I've been posting them for several years now, there's always someone that will make a comment about, it has to be in glass if I don't actually mention it. I know someone's gonna say that. And that's because it's true. Oils are best kept in glass, in cool areas, in dark areas. We do not want the phthalates, and we also wanna make sure it's BPA free, right? But there's still a lot of debate amongst science professionals as to what the health risks really are. You also need to take into consideration that even if you're paying extra for that glass bottle that it wasn't stored in plastic because that could be the reality as well. It could also be stored in tin and metal. My point is, is that if you are going to spend the extra money for glass, you may want to spend the extra time doing research to find out how that product was stored. If you're buying it from a brand new trust and it's not in glass, you may just want to pour it into that glass applicator just to help preserve its integrity. Now, the good part about using rosemary inside of your castor oil for hair regrowth is that there's actually been some scientific studies to support that it does help, which is fantastic. What you want to do is you want to apply it in a way that is going to be conducive to your lifestyle, right? So for instance, my partner, Alex, his best bet is to drop a few drops of rosemary oil inside of a shampoo and use it as a treatment that way because he will actually do it every night. For me, it is a couple times a week before I wash my hair, doing a scalp treatment with the castor oil and the rosemary, leave it on for 20 minutes and rinse it off. Now, if you're only using castor oil on your hair for regrowth, you definitely can leave it on overnight. That's completely up to you. For me, it's not that practical. So again, do whatever works because whatever you do on a consistent basis is what's actually going to pay off. None of this is medical advice. This is only based on my experience, what I've experienced with my clients, and also as a result of being in the beauty industry for over 25 years. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Drop any questions below. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you like this type of information. And remember, the more you know, the more you glow. Ciao for now.